Hi everybody! When it comes to creating elements with Revit API, there are many variables that we need to think about. Is it a built-in category or loadable family? Is it point-based, line-based, or maybe it's hosted in another wall? Depending on the answer, you might need to use different methods. So I thought I'm gonna show you where to look inside of Revit API documentation and how to actually create your different elements. So first of all, let's go to Revit and have a look. So right here I have an empty Revit project where we're gonna create some elements. If I'm gonna go to EFTutor tab, I've already prepared a button right here. Once I'm finished with this video, I'm gonna move it to YouTube lessons if you wanna have a look at the source code. I'm gonna hold Alt, click on the button, and this will open the folder where it's located. And at the moment, this is just the basic stuff inside. There's some information about the button, such as name and description. Then I import classes from Revit database. Also, I import list from the system. Then I created a few variables. These are the same as usual. We use doc, UI doc, app. Also I added here active view and active level and as you can see it's very easy to get them. And then in the main section I created a transaction and then I put a bunch of comments for the elements that we are going to create in this video. For those of you who don't know we need to create transaction every time we're trying to modify our Revit project. We also have to say where transaction starts and where it commits. And all the changes have to be in between these two statements. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this commit statement and I'm gonna bring it all the way down. So I don't have to move it every time I start to create new element. And now we can actually start creating elements. So the first one is the text node. Let's open Revit API and have a look. I'm gonna choose version 2021. And then mainly when you look for methods to create any elements, there are two places where you have to look. The first one is inside of the class of element that we are trying to create. In this case, it's text node. I'm gonna open the class. I'm gonna open its method. And I can see right away that there is a create method right here. So I can click on it. And there are four different ways to create your text node. Right here on the right we have description saying what's the differences between each of these methods. Some of them need more arguments and the other need less, depending on how it works. In this case I'm gonna select the first one and in here we can see all the arguments that we need to provide. We need to provide a document, we need to provide view ID, then XYZ position, then the text itself, and lastly we need to provide type ID of text node. Usually we can copy all of this and go to Revit and we can paste here as a reference so we know which arguments we need to provide. But if I'm just gonna place it like this, it's just gonna look horrible. So instead, we can create temp variable and create a doc string with three quotes. And then in the middle, we place it there and it looks the same. So let's use this method. We're gonna write text node, create. Then we need to provide our document, view ID, our position, which is gonna be a point, then text, and then text type ID. Now, once I have all the arguments, I can remove this and we're gonna go through and fill all the gaps. So the document, we already have it, it's in variables right here. Then the view ID we also have right here is the active view. We just need to make sure that we are getting ID. Then we need to create a point. It's very easy to create a point. We can use XYZ class and we just need to provide all the coordinates. In this case, I'm going to put it on 0, 0, 0 point. Then text is going to equal hello beam world. And finally, we need to find some text type class. So I'm just going to look for some random text type using filtered element collector. Write filtered element collector of document of class. I know that there is a class called text node type, and then I want to take first element ID. Then we can align it all together, and I think this is ready. Let's go to Revit and actually have a look. Click on the button, and you can see right here the Hello Beam World text node appeared. We have created our first element. Let's come in here. I'm gonna write here a comment arguments, and then create text node. And I'm gonna comment it all out because I don't wanna create text every time I click on the button. So the next element I wanna show you how to create is the room. Let's go back to Revit API docs. And same as before, we're gonna have a look in room class. I'm gonna click on class, click on method. And if you're gonna scroll through, you're not gonna find create method right here. Because as I have mentioned earlier, there are two places where we can look for the methods. One inside of the class. In this case, it's not here. Then the second place we have to look is the document class. Click on it, click on methods. And you can see that there are a bunch of methods which start with the word new. There is a new area method, there is a new fascia, there is new dimension and so on. And I can see right here that there is a new room method. So in here there is description on the right as well, so we can compare all of them together. So let me zoom a little so we can see it. In this case I'm gonna use the second method which is gonna create a new room on a level at specified point. I'm gonna click on it. We need to provide our level and then we need to provide UV point. If you don't know what UV point stands for, you can click on it. Right here it says it's an object representing coordinates in two-dimensional space. So it just has X and Y. Let's go back. In this case, I'm not even gonna copy this. So I'm gonna come here. First, I need to write doc create new room. Then we needed to provide our level, which is gonna be this active level. And then we needed to provide a point. PT equals UV. And this time I'm gonna move everything on 10 units to the right. Okay, 
So let's go to Revit. Since I know it's gonna be somewhere here because we're moving 10 away, I'm just gonna prepare the room separation line, so I'm not gonna get any warnings. So in EF Tutor, click on this button, and you can see it has placed the room right here. So let me adjust it a little, so it doesn't take as much space. And let's also try to create a room together with a tag. Sometimes maybe you wanna place a tag. We can go straight to Revit API Docs. I'm gonna try to write here new room tag. And then there is a method, which is also coming from document class. If you're not sure, in here you can scroll up until you see the parent class, in this case it's document. So to create a tag, we need to provide link element ID, it's a little bit different to element ID, but you will see. Then we also need to provide UV point, you can use the same, and we also need to provide view ID. Let's just copy this. I'm gonna make some comments, create room, arguments, I'm gonna create temporary variable with all this information. And now dog create new room tag. First, we need to create link element ID. If you don't know what it is, then we can open it in Revit API docs and have a look. Open the class and always look for constructors. If it has it, then it's gonna say here how to create one. In this case, we just need to provide element ID of an element. I'm gonna write room link equals link element ID. I'm gonna create a variable called room to assign it here when I create it. And I'm going to use it to create a room link. The next for UV point, we're gonna use the same point as the room. And for view ID, we actually have it right here in variables, have active view. And I can remove this, create room tag. And also I'm gonna zoom a little so you can see it better. Oh, and I noticed that I have misspelled here. This should be ID, otherwise it's gonna give you a warning. So now I can go to Revit. I'm gonna remove this existing room because I don't wanna have two rooms overlapping. And we're gonna click on it. And this time it has created a room and a room tag. So far it was quite easy to create elements. Let's comment it all out and let's move to the next one. How do we create a line? Specifically, we're gonna create detail lines. Same as before, we're gonna come here. I already know that this is gonna be in document class. So I'm gonna open it. And then in here, I'm just write, gonna write curve. And then there is new detail curve, a new detail curve array. In my case, I just wanna make a single line. Here it's quite easy, we just need to create a view and geometry curve. For this, we're gonna use the class line. And in line, there is a method which is called create bound. This is a very simple linear curve where we need to provide a start point and an end point. So let's go in here. First, we're gonna write detail line equals doc create. And right here, it said new detail curve. And here, we're gonna write doc create new detail curve, like it says right here. Then we need to provide view and then geometry curve. So we're gonna provide active view and we're gonna provide curve, which we're gonna create in a moment. So first of all, let's start with a point for our line. I'm going to write point start equals xyz 20 0 0 and then I'm going to create point end which is going to be 20 and then it's going to go 5 up. If you wonder why I take these numbers, I'm just going to add 10 every time I create a new element. So in here it was 10 and in here it was 0. Next we need to create a bound from line, just need to provide point start and point end and this is supposed to be our curve. Now let's go back to Revit, click on it and right away you can see that there is this line appeared. So let's have a look what's the next element. The next element is wall class. We're gonna come in here. And we're gonna look inside of the wall class itself. Go to methods and then there is the create method. In here there are actually five different methods to create your walls. Some of them to create single wall, some of them to create multiple walls. As you can see there is a list of curves. So this is why we're gonna use description every time we're choosing them. I'm gonna go with that one. Because this one is quite simple. So open it. It's gonna create a new rectangular profile wall within the project using default wall style. So we don't even need to look for any wall types to provide to the function. This is all we need. I'm gonna move it, call it temp, place it. And then we're gonna write wall, create. The first argument is doc. Then we need to create some sort of curve, same as we did for detail line. Then for level, we have our active level. Make sure that you're providing ID. And the last one is the boolean structural. So we have to write true or false. I don't want to make structural walls. I'm just going to copy the same points and line that we created in the previous example. And I'm just going to increment it to the next position. So this is going to be wall equals. Okay, I think this should be enough. Let's go to Revit, click on it. And now we created our wall. As you can see, there are quite many similarities between the elements. Because line and wall, they are both line based elements. And room and text, they are both point based elements. So there are similarities how you make it, but sometimes you need to provide a little bit more. So the next element we're gonna look at is windows and we both know that windows are hosted in the wall so probably we're gonna need to get our wall. I'm just gonna select this wall 
and add in stab with the Revit lookup snoop current selection and I'm going to copy its ID. And then here I'm going to write wall equals doc get element element ID and I'm going to paste this number in there. Ignore the color. This comes from the plugin for HTML colors. I don't know why it's showing here actually. Now I can comment it out so we don't create extra walls anymore. So we can add a few comments, arguments, create detail line and here as well arguments create a wall and gonna do the same here arguments then we have our wall and once we go to Revit API docs I'm gonna type here window and you will notice that window doesn't even have a class inside of Revit API docs and this is because window is a loadable family we can go to Revit to have a look first I'm gonna create a window myself select it then in add in tab in Revit lookup we're gonna snoop current selection and here right away you can see that there this is a class of family instance it has a category of window but not the class there is a difference i'm gonna remove it from the wall let's come back here now we're gonna look for a new family instance method open that one you can see that this comes from item factory base but it's all inherited inside of our document class so use it the same as if you would find it in document it even says right here insert a new instance of a family into the document and if i'm gonna zoom out a little there are a lot of different ways to create your elements in here we need to actually go for description look at all the arguments we want to provide and kind of figure out which one we need to use in our case we know that we are trying to paste a window which is a hosted in the wall so we need to look for anything related to hosted element and i can see right here there is insert a new instance of a family into document using location type and host element so i'm gonna open that one here are all the arguments that we need so let's copy them come back and same as before i'm gonna paste it here Let's create a variable window and with dog create new family instance. We need to provide these arguments. So the first one is going to be the point. Then we need to provide our family symbol. So we're going to write window type. Then we need our element host. We already have it. I'm just going to provide wall. And lastly, we need to provide structural type. And this time it's not a boolean true or false. This is actually using a class of structural type. So I'm going to copy it, but before we can use it, we need to import it. And let's start with it. I'm going to write from Autodesk, Revit, DB, Structure, Import, Structural Type. I'm going to move it up somewhere to Import. And then we can place it here. And if you place a dot, Revit API Autocomplete will show you all the possible options. In my case, I need to choose non-structural. I'm going to create comment, create a window. Now, this I want to rename into host wall, so it's a little bit more precise. Now we need to get a point and the point obviously have to be somewhere along the wall. I'm just going to look for the middle point. For this I need to get the, my start point and end point and then I can calculate the middle point between them. I just need to take point start then add point end and divide it all by two. Then it's always going to return the middle point of two points. Uh, we're going to use this point mid and lastly we just need to provide a window type. I'm going to use the filtered element collector same as before. Window type equals filtered element collector of document we need to provide category of windows it's going to be built-in category then we want to filter only types where element is element type and then i'm going to take first element and i need to make sure if it's an element or element id and in this case it's a symbol so it's just the type i'm going to break down this line it's a little too long and we can go to revit and test it same as before click on ef tutor Click on this. Now we created our window inside of the wall. Now it's getting more interesting. Let's come back here. We can comment all of this out. And the next, I also want to create some other family instance. I've prepared here a family instance of a placeholder, which is a category of furniture. And let's say I want to place a placeholder type A, which is just this orange circle. We're going to go again here. Then we're going to click on new family instance methods. And we need to choose another method because this time it's not hosted in the wall. It's just a point based family make it easier to search since I know that this is a point based family look for methods that have XYZ argument in there for example this one has XYZ family symbol and structural type and I think this should be enough actually for us inserts a new instance of a family into document using location and type symbol this is good to me so I'm gonna copy this come back here I'm gonna place it here temporarily then I'm gonna write element equals doc create new family instance then same as before we need a point we need a symbol and structural type, we already know that we can provide non-structural. I'm gonna remove all of this. So the point is gonna be XYZ4000. 
and now we need to get the symbol of our family. There are many ways to get it, as you have seen previously we used the filtered element collector to get some random type, but this time I want to look for the type with a specific name, because I want to get this placeholder type A. This I will need to create some special Revit API filter. Revit API filters, they are actually quite complicated, but I have a guide about filtered element collector and Revit API filters that can make it easier for you. And here this example is going to be very close to what we're looking for. This will get elements by type or family name. We can just modify a little to get the type instead of element. Now I'm going to use this snippet and I'm going to make a function out of it so it's easier to use and you can also copy and reuse it in your scripts. So I'm going to put it on the site. Then I'm just going to paste this function right here so you don't have to watch me write it. We will create a rule. We need to say which parameter we're looking for, which parameter value, what kind of evaluator, is it equal, contains. And then we create a filter rule same as in Revit filters. Then we turn this rule into a filter and then we use this filter inside the filtered element collector and then it's going to get us the right element. Now I can say symbol equals get type by name. Then I'm going to copy this name and it has to be exact because I'm using equals evaluator. So I'm going to write here arguments, create element and write here extra function. Also notice right here that in Revit 2023 version, you don't need this last boolean right here. Because they made some changes and starting 2023 you only need to provide the first three arguments and not the last one so pay attention to this now let's go to revit and have a look does it actually work click on it and here we go it created an element of this orange circle now let's create the type b i'm gonna just replace here type b and i'm gonna move it a little bit up then click on it again and i have a type b actually they are not supposed to be the same color let's make it blue here we go so this is type a this is type b and if you want to get this mini ebook where there are lots of examples about filtered element collector and Revit API filters, you can head over to my website, which is ericfritz.com. In here, go to the ebook section and you can read more about it and there is a button to get it. And the best part is that it's pay as you want. I set the minimum price to one euro so you can decide for yourself what it's worth because I want to make it as accessible as possible. I highly recommend you to copy this function to somewhere because it's very useful. Actually, I have to go right now, so I'm gonna continue this video some other day. Leave a like if you found value in this video, so it can reach even more people. And I wanna thank all my active supporters, and as always, I'm gonna see you in the next video. Happy coding!